I don't make fun of people you know, who say they've seen uh, unidentified objects in the sky. Yeah, the United States used to have a uh, body that investigated UFOs, yes. but that's been discontinued. Did you reopen it? I don't know yet. Five years before Jimmy Carter said that, the U.S. Air Force closed its unclassified investigation into UFOs. It concluded they were not a threat, not advanced technology, and not extraterrestrial vehicles. Is there anything in the files, either classified or unclassified, that would indicate that there may be extraterrestrial visitors over here? First of all, the project is completely unclassified. And there is nothing in the records which would indicate that we have been visited by any advanced civilization. How definitive is this conclusion, though? What if I told you America's top military intelligence agency was not just gathering UFO sightings after Blue Book ended, but reports of strange humanoids near the objects, too? We cover declassified files. Subscribe to join us. March 21st, 1974, 2 a.m. 21-year-old Maxi Iglesias is leaving his girlfriend's house in Pineda, Spain. A truck driver for a construction company, Maxi heads towards Lagunilla, 28 miles away. Near the halfway point, he sees something. A strange, piercing light is over the highway in front of him. Thinking it's another car, he flashes his brights. The light becomes stronger. His truck suddenly dies. What happened next is incredible, and made local papers at the time. Now, we also know American intelligence quietly took interest. The embassy in Madrid sent this information report to U.S. European Command in Germany. It catalogs 28 different UFO encounters in Spain over a 10-month period, sent to parties interested. Maxi gets the most ink. His truck dies. He gets a better look at the illuminated object. It looks like a plate on top of another, but rounded. From the DIA file, quote, two beings came out of the first vehicle, pointed to the observer's truck, then went in again, and both UFOs flew away. Maxi claims these beings were tall, about six and a half feet, with arms and legs. The next night, he returns to the spot. This time, the witness sees three silver ships parked on the highway, all with lights similar to a floodlight. He stops his truck in front of them, and several figures approach. They look like before, similar height and build. He didn't see their faces. Maxie says he next exited his truck and ran toward a gutter to hide in. The beings ran after him. He waits for them to pass before returning to his truck. He states the figures watched him through his windows before entering the silver object and again taking off. Ufologists rank events like this on a scale. Close encounters of the first kind, a visual sighting of an unidentified object. CE2, a sighting where evidence is left behind by the UFO. And CE3, an encounter where an entity is present. Maxi's sightings seem to be the first acknowledged CE-3s in U.S. government documents since J. Allen Hynek introduced the scale in 1972. An advisor to Project Blue Book, Hynek never formally used the scale there. Our review of the files finds a general absence of humanoid cases ever cataloged by the Air Force in the 50s and 60s. So why did this end up in a DIA archive? It didn't occur in isolation. Between 1968 and 75, 147 CE 1s, 2s, and 3s occurred in Spain. Ufologists Jacques Vallée and Vincente Juan Ballester Olmos narrowed these down from over 500. The others were misidentifications or hoaxes. Ballester Olmos is reputable. After he called the Spanish Air Force a pioneer in UFO declassification, the branch began using his stamp of approval to promote its archive. He makes special note of Maxi's sightings, gleaning extra details from his comments to local papers. On the first night, the landed craft had three legs. The beings that came out wore shiny diving suits. When the craft took off, it made a humming noise. 
his truck began functioning normally again when this happened. On the second night, there were four beings who chased him out of his truck. After he hid and returned to the truck, the beings suddenly reappeared in front of him. They next walked off the road. The craft in front of him rose off the ground and maintained a hover of 50 feet, almost as if it was letting Maxi pass. The other two silver ships remained grounded, but not directly in his path. His truck, previously dead, could now start again, so he began to drive. When he was 200 yards past the objects, he says he stopped to turn around. When he did, all three craft were again on the ground. The beings were now standing on the embankment of the road, pushing what seemed like tools into the dirt. In 1976, Valet wrote this case was extraordinary and asked, what do these events mean? Should they be taken as physical in nature or as the result of strange psychic effects? Local papers found Maxi reputable. His boss, the owner of the truck, said Maxi worked for him more than a year and was serious and balanced, someone who seemed incapable of lying. Maxi states in his first interview, Whoever wants to believe me, believe me, but it's true. An investigation by the Civil Guard, a national police force, seems to have found a shallow hole on the side of the road near the siding. But it's difficult to corroborate. It's only reported to local press with a photo. American officials never seem to go beyond cataloging the encounter either. The DIA file simply concludes, in April of this year, teams of extrasensory perception specialists held a meeting for the purpose of scientifically studying UFOs in that vicinity. Results unknown. In 2007, Maxi reiterated his testimony and maintained he saw UFOs and their occupants decades earlier. He added something else. He was told that people claiming to be from U.S. NASA went to the scene and analyzed the mark in the ground. This remains a hole in the case. We have no corroboration of this in NASA archives. We have more questions. Who were the parties in the U.S. military interested in this sighting? When this made its way to officials, were any actions taken? The report not only includes Maxi's, but 27 other strange encounters in Spain. September 73, a witness on the Atlantic coast sees a bright circular object with two hoops emit a powerful light. They claim to be immobile when seeing it. March 74, a salesman sees a mother ship and three smaller ships shaped like mushrooms. American officials were informed he was pursued by one of the smaller ships, which disappeared as he entered a village. That same day, a driver on the southern coast sees a luminous metal object that made him feel strange when he approached. And a day later, Two children are chased by a small, round, bright pink object before running into their house. In the month of Maxi's sighting, there were 12 other encounters throughout Spain, including many by groups of construction workers, school children, miners, and nurses. What's even stranger? None had any major similarities. Three were aluminum colored, two red, and sightings of yellow, pink, blue, and white were reported. A few were saucer shaped but others were round or mushroom. Some were silent, some were humming. One could argue, the differences in reports over such a small time frame make it hard to believe psychology isn't a component here. You may remember that episode of The Basement Office, where reporter Tim McMillan said a source inside the intel world told him they weren't flying saucers, they weren't Tic Tacs, they were something that possessed the ability to make your mind see what makes sense to you. You may also remember that leaked A-tip slide, a program partially funded by the DIA, which stated, the science exists for an enemy of the United States to manipulate both physical and cognitive environments. Could this be why Intel officials were monitoring the Spain flap? Because it represented a phenomenon showing the potential to cognitively affect its observers. How deeply did the military analyze these encounters in the 70s? Interestingly, Maxi's wasn't the only humanoid sighting in the file. June 16, 1974. A 46-year-old farm laborer says he sees a luminous, brilliant light while on a highway. 
He continues to drive and is pursued by the object for several miles. He gets a glimpse inside. There are three tall figures standing up. Understandably spooked, the witness turns off his light. The UFO backs off. He turns them on again and it approaches, following him all the way home, only departing when he turns off his car. We covered this file because it hints at a bigger truth. The American military didn't put the UFO issue to bed after Blue Book. In this 1976 letter from Army Public Affairs, it's admitted select military sightings were still being investigated by the Air Force in coordination with the FAA. DIA files also show sightings in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East were swept up in intel gathering. What remains a mystery, even today, is whether or not any of these international sightings were investigated. Or if claims like Maxie's, that U.S. scientists did visit his location, are true. What do you think? Are you surprised to know the military monitored these encounters? Could they still be watching subreddits and YouTubers today? What does this say about the seriousness with which the phenomenon might be taken behind closed doors? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much to our patrons, including Aperture. If you want to support our weekly episodes, consider joining us on Patreon. We'd really appreciate it if you would share this video with others you think are interested in this topic. Thanks again, guys. See you next time.